everywhere. It's tough to raise a family these days. In the wilds of South Africa, two lionesses, sisters, are single mothers with two cubs each. Their mate and protector has gone missing, leaving them vulnerable to marauding males who will kill their cubs and claim their territory. Two of their cubs are extraordinary. They're almost completely white, the result of an unusual genetic twist. How will this strange coloring affect their survival and the fate of their struggling family? Together, they must face every danger in the African bush. To play it safe, they must play it smart, and it will take all their courage. In South Africa's wild bush country, there are coats of many colors. Some stand out, others blend in. Each coat has a purpose, to distract, to communicate, to hide. Anything new or unusual is tested, every moment. This will be the case for some very special lions that were born as white as snow. Only three such cubs have survived to adulthood in the wild since white lions were first documented here in Timbavati in 1975. Their cousins are two months older, so these white cats will always be the underdogs. but it's their high visibility that may become their greatest challenge. Any cub is in danger if spotted hyenas catch one alone. She's only four months old, too young to fend for herself. The hyenas will try to kill her they don't see her better camouflaged mother. <laughs> Underneath the dirt is a white lion cub. She and her sister are bound to attract attention. Their mother is Matimba, the powerful one. Both of their parents carry the rare gene that produces white offspring. The tawny cub's mother is almost white herself. Rangers call her Kanya, the pale one. This is a small pride, just two adult lionesses, sisters, and their four cubs. The little white cubs have a fighting spirit. They are eager to take on their bigger cousins. The males are stronger. But these younger females are feisty little lions. The cubs will need to be both brave and cautious, for they only have their mothers to rely on. Their father, and defender of the pride has disappeared. Rival males may have killed him, but whatever the cause, his disappearance is a crisis for the pride. Without him, the little family is a magnet for marauding males. The two mothers have already detected intruders who are attacking a nearby herd of buffalo. One of their calves is down. Buffalo will defend their young ferociously, but this young male doesn't fear them. He has a brother to back him up, and another brother to back him up. 
These lions are nomads, in search of a pride of lionesses to take over. At five years old, they are in peak fitness. A strong coalition like this is ready to claim its own pride and territory. Not even a herd of buffalo can stop them. But they will try. The mother buffalo swings back, desperate to rally her fallen calf. But it's too late. The breeze carries a sharp warning to the two mothers. Matimba can smell the intruder's scent. They're out there, somewhere. A deep maternal instinct directs the two mothers. They must take their cubs away, far from the approaching danger. Far from the familiar mountains that overshadow their home deeper into unknown territory. Kruger National Park is vast, more than twice the size of Yellowstone. It's covered by dense woodland that supports great herds of plant eaters. All of these creatures are adapted to the bush in their own special ways. And all of them are prey for lions. Kruger is ruled by 2,000 lions, each pride with its own distinct territory. Matimba and Kanya will not be welcome on other lions' land. They can only keep their four cubs alive if they stay out of these territories. From now on, this family must live in the shadows. But wherever they go, they will still leave signs behind. One of the three nomads is on their trail. He can smell their scent. If the nomads catch up to them, they will kill the cubs. That will bring Matimba and Kanya back into Estrus, so they will bear the nomads' offspring soon after. Rival predators pose another lethal threat. If the cubs are found unattended by a keen-eyed leopard, it will kill them. Hyenas will too. Predators don't want rivals around. Heavy rain clouds mark the onset of summer. The empty river now comes back to life. Water bucks thrive in wetlands. But even they are captivated by the spectacle. From all around, animals come to the river. It gives wild dogs a chance to cool off. But none enjoy it more than the elephants. The white cubs are now eight months old. Their tawny cousins, ten months. This is unfamiliar territory for the two mothers. 
They don't know the best hunting spots. And the bush here is so dense, it hides prey well. Sharp eyes will see the white cubs against the bright green leaves long before the lions see them. After weeks with little to eat, the cubs are skin and bones. Mother lions do abandon weak cubs. But Matimba waits. Yet without better hunting, the cubs won't make it. So the mothers lead their offspring back to familiar territory. Home to Timbavati. Up ahead, half a day's journey, is the favorite waterhole of a huge herd of buffalo. The strongest and meanest of lion prey. To feed, the lions will have to get past aggressive bulls and a herd of horns. A wounded buffalo is a perfect target. As long as the herd stays put, he is safe. But after satisfying its thirst, the large herd must move on to find good grazing. The lame buffalo is left behind. The injured buffalo has taken shelter in the river in an attempt to forestall his fate. It's Kanya. Matimba is by her side with the cubs. This will be their first buffalo hunt. Matimba can see that she has no need to hide. The buffalo is helpless. But he's still too far from shore. The buffalo is playing its only card. In water, Matimba loses the advantage. She's wary, and now there's a bigger problem approaching. The stalkers are now stalked themselves. The elephant ensures the buffalo lives a little bit longer. But the family is too hungry to give up on a sure thing. Now, Matimba settles into wait, while Kanya chooses a spot in full view of the buffalo. The cubs are learning. One lioness distracts the prey, while the other waits to attack. Hours later, the buffalo changes position, but not wisely. It's just what Matimba has been waiting for. The buffalo is too weak to fight. The cubs take it all in.
The lionesses show the cubs exactly what to do. At last, the hungry cubs can fill their bellies. The pride will eat and rest. Eat and rest all through the night. The white cubs are now 10 months old. At this age, everything's a target for fun. Kanya never refuses an invitation to play. As for Matimba, she's always on duty, guarding her family. Still, Kanya always tries to lighten Matimba's spirit. The cubs join in as Matimba approaches. <laughs> Spotted hyenas are searching for food. They will follow lions especially groups without males. After the lionesses have hunted, they will gang up to push them off their kills. Our pride has taken down a zebra. The cubs are not old enough to hunt, but they're not so small and helpless anymore. The hyenas move in. The cubs are big enough to learn how to confront hyenas, so Matimba takes them forward. The atmosphere is charged with aggression. By scuffing the ground, Matimba stakes their claim to this place and the zebra kill behind them. Matimba allows the cubs to lead the confrontation. The cubs advance to the limit of their confidence, but it's still a standoff. Now Matimba shows them how to end the dispute. A day like this turns a cub into a lion. Kruger's hot summer days are a time to rest. Animals need to get out of the baking sun. Leopards take shelter up in the trees, and the lions in the shade beneath them. The leopard goes unnoticed, until she moves. And that gives the cubs an idea.
It's May, the beginning of autumn in Kruger National Park. The cubs are now 11 months old. They're strong and fit. Their mothers have raised them well. They can now follow on hunts, watching their mother's every move. Everything is fair game for these lions. Even the tallest of prey. They've taken the young giraffe and have dragged it under a bush, out of sight from vultures. For extra precaution, the mothers bury anything that sends out a strong odor. But there's a good breeze today. The scent may not remain in this secluded spot. Something is approaching. A vervet monkey sounds the alarm. Whatever it was seems to have gone. The mothers decide it's safe to return to their meal. By dusk, the cubs have had their fill. Now, all they want is sleep. But tonight, there will be no rest. It's one of the Nomad Brothers. He charges again. But Matimba and Kanya risk their lives to protect the cubs. Every second they stall him buys time for the cubs to get away. The mothers hold their own against him. But now, his brother arrives. He moves in on the giraffe kill. And that stops the attack. The mothers have no chance against two males. But the nomad's attention has shifted. They'll settle for the giraffe kill. The cubs can wait. Now, the two mothers have only one goal. Find their cubs. Their soft calls tell their cubs it's safe to come out. The family is reunited. They will leave the nomads to their stolen meal and quietly slip away. By August, the dry winter transforms the bush. The grass dies back. 
trees lose their leaves. Winter opens up the landscape. It's an excellent time for young lions to have a hunting lesson. The hunter must be patient, quiet, focused. In these conditions, a tawny colored lion blends beautifully into the bush. Not so a white lion. The kudu spots her and escapes. Lesson over. But will these big white cubs begin to impact the pride's ability to hunt? It's now November. New clouds usher in the wet season. The bush bursts back to life. The cubs are growing larger and stronger by the day. The white cubs more visible than ever. By December, the white cubs are 18 months old. The males, 20 months. They're real lions now, and their play looks more like real hunting. The pride has another giraffe kill, and their meal is attracting attention. For the next month, the hyenas are never far away, shadowing the pride, waiting for them to bring down prey. But today, Something's not right. The hyenas have suddenly disappeared. Dawn finds the family shaken by another attack by the nomads. They gather in close for comfort and to reaffirm their bonds. The mothers and white cubs are unharmed, but only one tawny male cub is participating. The other isn't responding. He lies quietly, a deep puncture wound on his side. His mother, Kanya, knows something is wrong. So too does his brother. He only moves deeper into the bush. The instinct of a wounded animal to hide.
His brother turns to their mother and invites her to play. But for the first time, Tanya refuses. An hour later, the poor cub can no longer sit up. His condition is worsening. His brother encourages him, tries to get him up. The cub is struggling. His mother is there. But there's nothing she can do. Still, his brother tries again. Ten minutes later, the poor cub has a painful seizure. And then, he's gone. His family holds back, unsure. And then Matimba and Kanya approach. In some quiet way, they understand this tragedy to their family. One of his white sisters says goodbye. And finally, his brother, his closest companion. Tanya's cub was 20 months old when he died. Losing him is a profound blow. The cub's death comes at the onset of summer rains and a new cycle of life taking hold across Kruger. It's time for the courtship dance of quite a performer, the red-crested Korhan. It's been two months since Kanya lost her cub. But life goes on, and she still has one of her own and her sister's white cubs to care for. 
Every day presents new challenges to the white fried. After a failed hunt earlier in the day, the white sisters are hungry and pestering their mother to hunt again. Then something catches their eye. Vultures. They've spotted a leopard with a fresh kill. A tall tree is the best place to keep it safe. The young lions have learned that where there are vultures, there's often an easy meal to steal. If they can scare off the owner. The cubs spent their youth climbing trees. Now, they have their reward. The white cub is not as graceful as a leopard, but she still gets what she wants. Now it's Kanya's turn, but it's not so simple for a full-grown adult. She can't climb like the cubs, but she can leap. After all that, her reward is one very thin leg. It's the tawny young male's turn. He now weighs as much as Kanya. Only great strength will get him up this tree. He is as nimble as a leopard and gets a choice cut of the meal. And provides a nice morsel for his mother. This tree climbing skill will serve him well. He won't have Matimba or Kanya to hunt for him when he leaves the pride. Stealing leopard kills could help him survive the hard times. It's June in South Africa, a special date for the pride. The white cubs are two years old and almost fully grown. They've survived all the perils and all the challenges of growing up wild. They also have a new home range far away from the nomads. A place called Klesiri. It's rich in game. They took down a buffalo in the night. But once again, hyenas are onto them. A brave white cub is ready to take them on. One hyena she can handle. But a whole clan is a different kind of challenge. She moves to confront them with a confident swagger. Just like her mother. No longer a cub. Right from the start, she takes charge intimidating the hyenas. She scuffs the ground, claiming ownership of this territory, just as her mother once showed her. She is so confident, she lays down. The hyenas mistake this for weakness and move forward. They come at her from all sides. 
13 hyenas. She lets them come. And then, it's her turn. The hyenas know they will not get past this lion. At sundown, the hyenas are suddenly spooked and flee. It's a large male, and he's heading for the pride. Matimba moves to defend her family. This male is new. He's not one of the nomads. He calls a greeting, not a threat. Matimba keeps up the aggressive defense and moves forward to intimidate him. But he doesn't want to fight. A white youngster, who's pretty intimidating herself, is there to support her mother. Now the whole pride moves up to join with Matimba. The hyenas help themselves to the unguarded carcass. Time to get back to their meal before the hyenas devour it all. Matimba seems to know this male is not like the others. So she returns to her pride and allows the male to follow her. The family is still on high alert. But he isn't here to attack them. He's here to woo them. But first, he will sample the fruits of their hunting. It will take some time before he wins their trust, but the family now has a big adult male to help defend them. By the time Summer returns to Kruger, the new male has secured his place with the White Pride. Kanya is the first lioness to mate. A new chapter is now beginning for the White Pride. Matimba and Kanya's new cubs will be arriving soon. The tawny cousin will set out on his own. And the White Sisters have a whole new life ahead of them. They're the first white lions to reach maturity in the wild in more than two decades. Their success so far has been remarkable. They began as scruffy little cubs and grew into fine young lionesses. For the past two years, they struggled to survive Kruger's fierce wilderness and the challenges of their white coats. But they've had two amazing lionesses looking out for them, teaching them everything they know. Their future will soon depend on their own abilities, their own teamwork, and their own wisdom. Will they be strong hunters raising their own cubs in the years to come? The story of Kruger's White Lions is just beginning. <laughs>